Here's the thing. Second mortgages, I, I get it. You guys hate them. I get it. But did you know that Freddie Mac is planning on entering the second mortgage market? Not the secondary mortgage market. No, the second lien mortgage market. Now, why are they doing this? Well, let me tell you. And listen up, people. <music> Hey, listen, loan officers, if you're looking to play the game of musical chairs and moving your license, have a conversation with us. You're going to talk with everybody else, every head owner in the world. Might as well talk with us. Fill out the information down below and let's uh, let's have a chat about this. Maybe we're a fit. Then again, maybe we're not. You never know. American households carried $17.987 trillion in debt by Q1 of 2024, marking a significant rise over previous years. Mortgages accounted for 70% of consumer debt, with the average mortgage debt reaching $244,000. $498 in 2023. Credit card debt slightly decreased to $1.115 trillion in Q1 of 2024 with an average balance per consumer of $6,501 as of Q3 2023. We're carrying $17 trillion in debt and I like to bring this up. How big is a trillion? You know, a million seconds is like 11 years. A billion seconds is 28 years and a trillion seconds is 28,000 years. Guys, we are in a trillion, multi-trillion dollar industry and that's exactly why Freddie wants to be a part of this. And again, that's where it involves you. So as such, Freddie wants to make it faster and cheaper for homeowners to tap into their equity, you know, so they could fall further behind on their debt, create more debt, I don't know, maybe another inflationary environment, all to make sure that that added income is in the economy and it's going to pad the stock market because that's what political backers want them to do. And if you've checked over the past couple of days, everything is going to hell in a handbasket, but the stock market is doing splendidly. But back to our point here. If you had to feed the village, you could catch one marlin or 500 bluegill. Both do the same job. Now it's harder to catch a marlin, but a bunch of bluegill is no small feat either. You just have to understand the tackle and bait you need to use, which means you have to understand what you're fishing for. Today, my friends, we are fishing for bluegill. Now, Freddie Mac just announced that there, well, there's going to be plenty of bluegill for loan officers to catch over the course of the next couple of years. Really, the question is, you decide if you're going to choose to fish for bluegill. I'll tell you, it will sustain you through some of these hard times. And one more point I want to bring up while we're at it. If you're going out there and you're fishing for bluegill, the little tiny fish, you know what happens occasionally? You find yourself in a conversation with one of your clients who says, hey, maybe I want to increase my real estate holdings. That conversation becomes a stepping stone to a larger conversation where you could close a first lien, and that's where you start marlin fishing once again. So don't discount the bluegills. I hope this makes sense. And you do realize, don't you, that home prices have gone up 47% since 2020. U.S. home prices 41.1% increase since 2020 has outpaced not only the growth of the 90s, the 2010s, and it's now threatening to surpass the entirety of the 2000s. This is why the feds are trying to kill everybody financially. We can't sustain these numbers. Property values are out of control. We need to get them back under control. With the feds though, if you're looking for it, well, relief is decidedly not on the way when it comes to rates or when it comes to the Fed fund rate. If you expect lower mortgage rates to make buying a home slightly cheaper this spring, consider your homes dashed right now. This is what the experts are telling us. The Fed Reserve put a hold on interest rate cuts last week and tweaked plans for its balance sheet. Actions that may not raise mortgage rates significantly, but are likely to keep them elevated for a long period of time. This is according to analysts. I gotta tell you, I just started writing loans again, and I haven't looked at these in over a decade, actually writing loans. A few days into this thing, I already see a very clear path to success. But something that's very ironic, when I got out of writing loans, the average rate was right around 7%. I'm getting back in loans. The average rate is 7%. The average rate is 7% once again. I gotta tell you, this is a comfortable place for me to be. Just remember, the twos that you had in the past, forget about those, erase them. Sevens is where we're going to be for a while and people buy and people buy and refinance with sevens, eights or nines because at our car, because at our core, what are we? Well, we're a bunch of degenerate consumers. I hope this helps. Mm -hmm.